Hello everybody and welcome to Parks Bros, it's Drew here and today we're going to be ranking, rating, and reviewing all five roller coasters at Holiday World in Santa Claus, Indiana. If you haven't seen this series before, we're going to look at all five of the roller coasters at Holiday World in order that I would rank them from worst to best while I limit myself to one minute of talking time for a miniature review before giving my ratings. I was able to visit Holiday World in Santa Claus over a year ago in 2022 and was able to check out four of their five active roller coasters. And yes, I acknowledge that soon they will have their sixth coaster in Good Gravy opening next year in 2024 let's get ranking all of the five that they have now and if you're curious i do have separate reviews on a couple of these rides so if you'd like me to go more in depth with some of these roller coasters check out those videos without further ado though let's get ranking Coming in at number 5 is the only roller coaster I did not ride on my visit and that is Howler, which is a Zamperla manufactured gravity coaster made for the little ones. It only has a max height of 13 feet and barely goes over 15 miles an hour. So with our one day at the park we decided to skip out on this ride as I've been on many of the same ride model all over the US. But this is a great ride for the little ones as I said earlier. It can be a little uncomfortable going into some of those turns, but I would definitely say this is for a beginner roller coaster rider and typically I give them a 3 out of 10. At number 4 we have the first of many wooden roller coasters on this list. This is Raven, which was the first major roller coaster at the park opening in 1995. This ride greets you at the front entrance of the park, although the station is a little weird to get to from there, but it has some stunning views of the nearby lake as you'll even travel over it at one point while giving some great moments of airtime. This ride would be higher on my list if I got a second ride, I'm sure, but with my one ride, it was very easy to hammer home the fact that this ride felt a lot shorter than the others in the park. Sure, there are some fantastic moments in there, and it's definitely a step above in intensity over Howler, but to me, this is just a really solid roller coaster, and there's nothing wrong with that. I would say be an intermediate coaster rider, and out of 10, I'd rate it a 7. At number 3, we'll be visiting the only coaster with inversions on this list, as well as it being a launch coaster. This is Thunderbird at the very back of the park. This B&M launched wing coaster is really intense, especially compared to the coasters we've talked about prior. It starts off with a ridiculously powerful launch section that puts you directly into a sidewinder inversion. This of course leads directly into more and more of those upside down moments as well as near miss elements that make you feel like your legs are going to be chopped off and some really interesting interactions with some of the other roller coasters around it. This ride is something I could ride all day long if it wasn't all alone in the back there, but it gives some really great positive g-forces all throughout as well as offering some nice negative g-forces when you're going upside down creating a hang time feeling. This, in my opinion, is another ride that feels just a little bit short, but man, it's powerful and it's a lot of fun. For this ride, I would definitely recommend being an experienced coaster rider before checking out, and out of 10, I'd give it an 8. Now that we've made it to the top 2, this is where it's almost impossible for me to choose. The Legend is stellar any time of day you ride it, but The Voyage has one of the most legendary night rides ever while offering kind of a lackluster day experience. But if I had to go by my personal rankings, at least how I compared them with my top 25, number 2 is is the legend. This was the second of the big three wooden coasters at Holiday World and offers an experience unlike the others. This ride is focused a lot on the lateral forces you experience on these crazy machines, pushing you side to side. There's a lot of that in tandem with some great head and hand chopper moments where it feels like everything above you is just too close and some really amazing moments pushing you out of your seat with some tremendous airtime. This ride to me is my personal favorite at the park, especially for for that triple helix near the end and that amazing twisting drop if you're sitting in the back row. This ride is absolutely amazing in my mind and is a must ride. I can't wait to get back just for this ride alone. And if you're curious, I would say be an experienced rider before checking this ride out as it can be pretty intense, especially compared to Raven, at least in my experience. And out of 10, I'd give it a 10. This leads us to number one, which is of course, The Voyage. This is a legend in its own right, constantly talked about within the coaster enthusiast sphere and for good reason. This is the tallest, fastest, and longest ride at the park, and even the longest wooden coaster in the world with one lift hill. 
It offers some amazing head and hand choppers itself and way more airtime than the Legend. Well, if it's running fast, that is. This ride can kind of be polar opposite compared to when you're riding it, as in the daytime we experienced something that was rather slow and didn't offer too much to us, whereas when it sped up during the nighttime, it was unbelievable. Regardless, this ride is incredibly long. It even has you thinking sometimes, why isn't it over yet? And in a good way. And I think it's fair to say that at least for coaster enthusiasts, this is the ride that they're looking for, especially when it comes to this park. But with that said, I would say be an experienced rider for sure. And if I got to rate it, it's going to be a 10. So there you have it. All of the roller coasters at Holiday World ranked, rated, and reviewed by myself. I'm curious to see what your top five is. Put it down in the comments section if you would. I'd really appreciate to see what your opinion is. And I will say I can't wait for it to be a top six roller coasters at that park when Good Gravy officially opens next year. And why? While I would estimate that this ride would probably take the number five slot with Howler pushing back to number six. It's a perfect fit for the park as it helps bridge the gap between their pretty extreme coasters and of course Howler. But with that all said, I want to say thank you all so much for watching and if you haven't yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button. We're almost at 15,000 subscribers and when we hit that mark, we'll have a brand new t-shirt shop open if you'd like to check that out. But of course, until then, we'll see you on the next ride.